baboons out of urban areas on the Cape Peninsula in South Africa is a huge challenge for conservation authorities. As towns and villages expand into the low-lying mountainous areas where baboons prefer to forage, the overlapping land occupied by both species becomes a battleground. Being highly intelligent primates, baboons have learned how to access people's homes and gardens. As long as they're rewarded with high calorie human foods, they will continue to return, often resulting in negative interactions with humans. In the urban environment, baboons are often exposed to risks that threaten their welfare and conservation. Every year, baboons are injured and killed as they attempt to navigate the urban space. They are hit by cars, attacked by dogs, electrocuted, shot at and poisoned. The current baboon program uses field rangers to keep baboons out of urban areas most of the time. There is a strong case that baboons should be restricted to natural parts of their range and kept permanently out of urban areas to prevent them from being exposed to dangers that threaten their welfare. In 2012, residents of the Swanswick suburb of Cape Town had reached breaking point due to baboons frequently raiding homes and gardens. It was decided by the residents that a baboon-proof electric fence was the only solution. Grant Chapman, a long-time resident of Swanswick, explains what life was like before the baboon fence. Well, we used to get baboons in Swanswick on a daily basis on most of the properties. And in fact, whole troops of baboons, the whole troop used to come through. And they did a fair amount of damage. We never used to have veggie gardens and they stripped the vines and fruit trees of, of all the fruit. And they also used to come into the houses and raid people's fridges, take whatever food is available and uh, go off with it. The baboon fence has been a success. Residents can now leave windows and doors open, allow children to play outside, plant fruit trees and to have veggie patches. And life for the baboons has improved too, as Nick Harris, another long-time Swanswick resident, explains. From the baboons' point of view, they're not chased away from the fence by the baboon monitors. They, in fact, actually feed right up to the fence and they will, a whole troop will walk along the outside of the fence, foraging as it, as it goes, with the monitors very quietly following them behind. So there's no there's no agitation uh, and, and no interface between the, between the two. The success of the fence is not just anecdotal. Proof comes from tracking baboon troop movements before and after the management intervention. Prior to the fence being built, baboons frequently cross the urban boundary into the suburb, where afterwards we see a clear demarcation showing that baboons can now only forage up to the fence line. In the coastal village of Komaki, residents are facing a similar baboon crisis, where field rangers have the almost impossible task of trying to keep the slungkop troop of baboons out of the village. The natural range of the troop includes Slungkop Mountain and the low-lying areas that lead straight down into Komaki village. The steep-sided terrain of the mountain makes it difficult for field rangers to stay ahead of the troop and to prevent incursions into the village. A baboon-proof electric fence could well be the most effective management strategy for keeping baboons out of Komiki village and safely in their natural habitat. The fence could run alongside the existing Komiki firebreak at the base of Slankot Mountain, with gates positioned strategically along the fence to allow community access to the mountain. Similar to the Swanswick fence, several key features of the Komiki fence could include wooden poles with electric wires that run along the inside of the fence at a set distance from the bottom to the top, as well as bonox mesh fencing allowing smaller animals such as mongooses to get through. The fence could extend below the ground to stop animals from being able to dig underneath, where there is also the possibility of creating specialised porcupine tunnels. The height of the fence would be approximately 2.4 metres with an angled electrified top section preventing baboons from being able to climb over. In the event of a fire, the fence would be switched off and the gates left open. During the devastating fire of 2015, the Swanswick fence held up well, 
only needing a few wooden poles to be replaced and no animals died along the fence. Regular maintenance of the fence and fire break is of course necessary to ensure that the fence works effectively. Baboons will be able to forage right up to the edge of the fence, allowing them to use more of their natural range. Eliminating the need for field rangers to maintain a buffer zone between the troop and the village. A fence in Komiki could also act to keep other wild animals out of dangerous urban areas, where pesticides, cars and dogs are also a threat to their well-being. Although a fence inserts a barrier against nature that many Komiki residents would prefer not to see, it is probably the only effective long-term solution to ensure the welfare and conservation status of Komiki's baboons. <laughs>